Hi students, in the last class we discussed about uh, the production of pollen grains and the structure of pollen grains, right? Within the structure we discussed about uh, the exine part of the pollen grain, intine part of the pollen grain and the contents which are present in the cytoplasm. We know, we discussed, there is two nucleus are present. One of the nucleus is called as vegetative nucleus. This is also called vegetative cell. Okay, the vegetative nucleus is the yeah vegetative nucleus having large size. Another nucleus, small nucleus, right? This one is called as generative nucleus. The cell is called as generative cell, right? So within one pollen grain structure, two nucleus are present. We discussed about uh, this concept because. There is an endomitosis is takes place. Endomitosis indicates without any division of cytoplasm, right? There is a nucleus division is takes place. So, without any division of nucleus, sorry, without any division of cytoplasm, if if the nucleus is divided, it produces two nucleus. The two nucleus are present in one cell. So, that kind of division is called as endomitosis and again in pollen grains, asymmetric endomitosis will be takes place because one of the nucleus having large size, other nucleus having small size. The reason asymmetric spindle operators formation means one side formed spindle operators, length is long, other side formed spindle operators the length is short. During cell division process, spindle operators are formed. One of the spindle operator long. See, this is a, another spindle operator. Here, the spindle operator length is the short. One of the length is the short. So, one length is long, other length is short. Due to the Asymmetric spindle operators formation, one of the nucleus having large size, other nucleus having small size. Right? So, that, that is the basic reason for the asymmetric nucleus formation. Asymmetric means which are not having same size or which are not having yeah, equal size. Right? So, that is the basic concept we discussed in the last class. Coming to this class, pollen grains. Right. See, pollen grains are related to the male reproductive organs. Pollen grains are related to the male reproductive organs. See, the pollen grains which are okay, which are also called male gametophytes. Pollen grains also called male. Pollen grains also called male gametophyte. Male gametophyte. So, pollen grains, yeah, these are also called male gametophytes, okay, which are involved in the fertilization process. Initially, the pollen grains are involved in pollination, right, followed by fertilization, followed by the fertilization. So, the male gametophytes are nothing but pollen grains, which are transferred from Anther to the stigma, the step is called as pollination. After the pollination, whatever that pollen grain, yeah, this is one of the pollen grain, right? This is the outermost part is called as exine, like this. These are the exine parts. See, this is one of the, yeah, this is the exine part. This is the exine part. See, in a side, the reason smooth layer is there. The smooth layer is called as intine. The intine continuously forms the tube-like structure. This is called as pollen tube. Inside the pollen tube, there is in two male gametes are present. These male gametes are involved in fertilization process. These two male gametes are involved in the fertilization process. If anyone asks me the question, sir, how the continuous tube formation is takes place? We already discussed there is in large irregular size nucleus is present. The nucleus is called as tube nucleus. The nucleus is called as tube nucleus, right? That tube nucleus involved in the pollen tube formation. Involved in the pollen tube formation, right? So that is about the tube nucleus. 
say how the male gametes are produced. Whatever that generator nucleus is present here, that generator nucleus involved in the division process that is nothing but mitosis, that generator nucleus produces the male gametes. So the generator nucleus before the formation or after the formation, the conditions we will discuss. See the generator nucleus involved in the mitosis produces the two male gametes, produces the two male gametes. So that is about uh, the pollen grain having nucleus or the cells. Sometimes see the tube nucleus, this one is also called yeah, vegetative cell. Vegetative nucleus uh, also called tube nucleus. Vegetative nucleus contains cell is called as vegetative cell. Right? See generative nucleus contains cell is called as generative cell. That is about uh, vegetative nucleus and the generative nucleus. Right? See that is the parameter. See coming to this class, the smallest pollen grain. Okay. Uh, in the world, the reason we know smallest cell is there and largest cell is there. But suppose if we discuss about the smallest cell, right? There is a mycoplasma is there. Within that mycoplasma also, the very smallest one is the PPLO, plural pneumonia like organisms. Right? In animals, the largest cell is the hostage egg. In plant cells, there is a cycus ovule is there. That is about that uh, small and large cells. Here, we are discussing about the small size pollen grain and the large size pollen grain. Here, the small size pollen grain, okay, here, mysotis small size pollen grain, okay, produced by the plant, the plant name is mysotis. Generally, pollen grains are produced by the plants. So, the plant name is the mysotis, right. And coming to the largest pollen grain, see, mirabilis, the plant name is the mirabilis. We know about uh, mirabilis. In Telugu, parijartam, the plant name is parijartam, right. So, mirabilis is the plant name, it produces the longest see largest not longest see this is the largest pollen grain this is the largest pollen grain right and coming to the next one is the longest pollen grain longest pollen grain means here length is very long and it's having the ribbon shape the pollen grain having the ribbon shape right so longest pollen grain is the juicera longest pollen grain is the juicera actually the plant is hydrophyte the plant is hydrophyte see which is grown in uh, uh, under the water, right? Means uh, there is a river is there, whatever that bottom soil content is there, the plant roots are attached, right? Under the water, right, the pollen grains are released and which are having very heavy weight, okay, which are having very heavy weight and the length is also long, the length is also long, right? Having ribbon shape, juicera pollen grains, okay, juicera is a hydrophyte, it produces the pollen grains. The pollen grains are having, okay, length is very long, the shape is ribbon shape, the shape is the ribbon shape, right. So that is about the smallest pollen grain, largest pollen grain and longest pollen grain. So we know the difference between uh, large and uh, long, right. So that is about that uh, three types, yeah, three types means here based on that variations we discussed here, one is that small, other one is that large, other one is that long, pollen grains, right. See, pollen grains shed, pollen grains shed, shed means indicates here release, pollen grains shed indicates here release, in which conditions the pollen grains are released, in which conditions the pollen grains are released, last time we discussed when the anther dehiscensis takes place, when the anther dehiscensis takes place, see whenever that favorable temperature is maintained, the anther walls are broken down, the anther walls are broken down, once the anther walls are broken down, the pollen grains are released out. The pollen grains are released out. See, pollen grains released condition. Pollen grains, are the releasing condition or the releasing process is nothing but shed. That is nothing but the shed. Pollen grains are shed. Means pollen grains are releasing from anther. Or pollen grains are released from anther. Right? So here, pollen grains shed. That is nothing but pollen grains released. See, generally the pollen grains are released in, okay, two conditions. Yet, yeah, conditions means, I'm, we are discussing about the, okay, internal, internal changes within the pollen grain. Internal changes within the pollen grain. I will explain.
See, total plant produces total plant produces pollen grains are hundred percent is in that sixty percent of the pollen grains. The very first case is sixty percent of the pollen grains released in two cell stage. Sixty percent of the pollen grains are released in two cell stage. That is nothing but one of the large nucleus is present, right? See, this is the nucleus. The condition is okay. This is the one cell. This is the one cell, right? See, this is another. This is another cell, right? In this case, the condition is called as. Yeah, this is the spindle shaped nucleus. This is the spindle shaped nucleus. See, what I'm telling. Sixty percent of the pollen grains released in two cell stage. Sixty percent of the pollen grains released in two cell stage. See, majority of the pollen grains. Okay, majority of the pollen grains released in this condition, and which are reaches the stigma. Which are reaches the stigma. Once these are once these are falls on the stigma, right? See, this is the large nucleus, and this is the small nucleus. The small nucleus is divided. The small nucleus is divided. Right? Produces the male gametes. Produces the male gametes. This condition is three cell stage. This condition is three cell stage. What I am telling? Remember, it's very very easy concept. Once the pollen grain reaches the stigma in this condition, okay. Initially, when the pollen grains are releasing, that time the pollen grain having how many number of nucleus? Two nucleus. Okay. After releasing, right? If the pollen grains are reaches the stigma, or during traveling process also, means within the air, okay, by the insect, okay, in this, okay, in that condition also, maybe we don't know. Okay. So during the traveling process, or once it reaches the stigma, that time. This is the tube. Okay, this is the tube nucleus. The genital nucleus is divided, produces two male gametes. Produces the two male gametes. So this condition is three cell stage. This condition is three cell stage. So pollen grain must and should be exhibit the three cell stage. In majority of the pollen grains, okay, most of the plants, most of the plants producing pollen grains, producing pollen grains or releasing pollen grains. Releasing pollen grains having two cell stages, two cell stages. After releasing process, maybe okay, the two cells are two cells, especially the genital two cell involved in the mitosis process produces two male gametes. So the three cell stages, okay, modified into three cell stages. The two cell stages modified into three cell stages. So sixty percent of the pollen grains are released in two cell stages. And come to the next one. Forty percent of the pollen grains here directly before before the releasing before the releasing. See this stage in this pollen grains after the releasing. Okay, this stage. Okay, in this in this pollen grains. Okay, before the releasing before the releasing. Releasing is nothing but anther contains the pollen grains. The mature anther contains the pollen grains. So majority of the releasing pollen grains are having okay two cell stages. Okay, forty percent is of the pollen grains. Forty percent is of the pollen grains released when these are having three cell stages. When these are having three cell stages. So this is one of the tube nucleus. This is one of the tube nucleus, right? See, these are the. This is one of the generative cell. The generative cell here involved in the mitosis produces the male gametes. Produces the two male gametes. So this is the one nucleus. This is the second nucleus. This is the third nucleus. So forty percent days of the pollen grains are released in released in three cell stages. Sixty percent of the pollen grains are released in two cell stages. Sir, here three here three cell stages present or absent? Definitely present. But after releasing process, after releasing process, right? The three cell stage is maintained. Here before the releasing. Before the pollen grains releasing, the three yeah the three cell stage is maintained, right? So that is about that pollen grain shake process. See, once the pollen grains are released, which are reaches the stigma, then the step is called as pollination. The step is called as pollination. Now here uh, we have to discuss some of the points which are related to the pollen grains, lifespan of the pollen grains, 
right? How the pollen grains are preserved? Okay, is there any allergic reactions are caused by the pollen grains? All these parameters we'll discuss. Coming to the next concept is the pollen grain lifespan. Upon the earth, whatever the living cells are there, all the living cells have a lifespan. All the living cells means some exception cases also there. For suppose, if we discuss about the unicellular organisms like bacteria, amoeba, right, which are not having natural death which are not having natural death because the cells are continuously involved in the binary vision right which are the the parental cell produces the daughter cells so in bacteria and in unicellular organisms no natural death right that is one of the exception case and uh, one more best example is the cancer cells whatever that cancer cells are there the cancer cells also not having the natural death Natural death is absent. Death is there, but naturally death is absent in cancer cells and uh, whatever that unicellular okay, prokaryotes are there, eukaryotes are there. Unicellular prokaryotes and unicellular eukaryotes means one of the best examples is the bacteria is a unicellular prokaryote. Unicellular eukaryote indicates yeah, amoeba is the best example, paramecium is the best example, dinoflagellates are the best example, right? So, in unicellular organisms, natural death is absent. So, the case is different, right? So, here we are discussing about that uh, pollen grain lifespan. Pollen grain lifespan. Say, some plants produced pollen grains are having less lifespan. And some plants produced pollen grains are having more lifespan. More lifespan. See, rice and wheat is the best example. Rice and the wheat is the best example, right? See, the rice, we know about the rice. Right? See, wheat, mostly we didn't see that wheat because our major cultivation is, in India, major cultivation is the rice, especially in Andhra, right? Major cultivation is the rice. So, right and wheat, the pollen grains are having, the lifespan is 30 minutes, right? And Solanaceae family, Leguminaceae family, we know about the brinjal. Brinjal is belongs to the Solanaceae. The family is the Solanaceae family. And leguminaceae family, we know about pulses, green gram, red gram, right, black gram is there, right. So, all these are belongs to the leguminaceae, right, the plants are belongs to the leguminaceae. So, within solanaceae and leguminaceae plants, the pollen grains lifespan, okay, maintain up to months. Within solanaceae family, leguminaceae family, the pollen grains having lifespan up to months. But in rice and wheat, in rice and wheat, 30 minutes only. 30 minutes. So how the variation is takes place? Some plants pollen grains are having minutes. Rice and wheat. Some plant pollen grains having up to months. How the variation is takes place? Remember, this is the one of the pollen. Okay, this is one of the pollen grain. The pollen grain contains that uh, cytoplasm. Within the cytoplasm, more amount of food is there, more amount of minerals are there, more amount of nutrients are there, more amount of enzymes are there, lifespan is more. If the pollen grain contains, the cytoplasm is less, nutrients are less, storage food metal is less, lifespan also less. So the concept is, more amount of cytoplasm indicates it's involved in the storage of more amount of the food material, more amount of the minerals, more amount of the enzymes. So finally, the lifespan also more. So concept is simple, okay, small size, okay, means here cytoplasm is very less, cytoplasm is very less, right, lifespan also less, because storage food material, minerals, all these contents are less. Sarnese and leguminaceae, within this case, See, somewhat uh, there is a rich cytoplasm content is there. Within that pollen grains, there is a rich cytoplasm content is there. Presence of uh, rich content of cytoplasm, more amount of storage food material, more amount of minerals, more amount of enzymes, then automatically lifespan also more. Lifespan also more, right? 
so that is about that uh, the lifespan right uh, yeah difference between yeah rice wheat and the solanaceae family and the leguminaceae family coming to the next concept is the pollen grains energy source see pollen grains nowadays we are using as energy source all of you remember in the olden days we used uh, vegetables right rice that is one of the good uh, source for the body good energy source for the body in the next generation okay the whatever that vegetarian diet is there vegetarian diet replaced by the non vegetarian diet most of the people are like to eat uh, chicken mutton fish different uh, whatever yeah if we see in uh, different country peoples uh, the people they like to eat even mosquitoes uh, flies house flies right see what i am telling here initial days vegetative diet is the later the next diet is the uh, non veg diet chicken mutton right see the concept is here nowadays most of the most of the people like to eat pollen grains like to eat the pollen grains see one of the best example we know about the athletes virat kohli right uh, we know about uh, some some people like yeah some people athletes are they see sports sports persons especially right most of the sports persons are like to eat rich rich energy rich food energy rich food see if they eat energy rich food then body also highly active body is active then they perform maximum percentages they perform maximum percentages so here pollen grains nowadays we are using as energy source see if we eat chicken mutton okay if we eat if the persons whoever eat the chicken and the mutton that will also leads to the disorders see vegetarian diet is comparatively very better one compare with that uh, non veg diet non veg diet see here our concept is pollen grains energy source so pollen grains are having rich percentage of cytoplasm we are already discussed this is one of the pollen grain inside the pollen grain there is a rich percentage of the cytoplasm is present within that rich percentage of the cytoplasm there is a nucleus are there forget about the nucleus here our target is the cytoplasm cytoplasm contains that food material and the cytoplasm contains that minerals and cytoplasm contains the enzymes right so if the person taken if the person taken pollen grains as the diet right the pollen grains contains enzymes minerals especially activates the our body contains enzymes our body contains enzymes and uh, see the pollen grain cytoplasm contains enzymes are very very important to our body because here enzymes are made up of with the amino acids enzymes are nothing but proteins proteins are made up of with the amino acids so amino acids are very very important to our body right so here pollen grains having rich cytoplasm that cytoplasm contains the rich percentage of nutrients and rich percentage of the enzymes right all these are majorly involved in the activation of any person contains yeah any person contains the body enzymes any person contains body enzymes are activated by the nutrients and the enzymes see in our days pollen tablets also available in the market pollen tablets also available you just uh, type in amazon or the flipkart then we will get that uh, pollen tablets okay there is a small box is there or a small yeah, glass uh, bottle is there right within that bottle the number of tablets are there see most of the people are nowadays okay they are uh, they like to take these tablets because see these tablets contains that uh, very rich nutrient source and that source especially activates our body contains enzymes our body contains enzymes right so pollen tablets are available and pollen syrups are also available see pollen syrups are nothing but see just type in internet then we can see these products also right see if we observe the pollen syrups see just the pollen grains are collected the pollen grains are mixed with the honey the pollen grains are mixed with the honey so honey with pollen grains the okay honey is already very good source and very healthy source because 
honey majorly involved in the activation of our immune system right so in the same manner the pollen grains are provides that uh, rich nutrient source so what i'm telling here presence of honey and presence of pollen grains immune system is activated at the same time okay nutrients are rich nutrients are supplied to the body so the person is very fit those who are eating those who are taking that pollen tablets and the pollen syrups the persons are very very active the persons are very very active and next one yeah i already said athletes nowadays most of the athletes are taking that pollen diet they are following the pollen diet right and next one is the race horses we know about that race horses see the horse running very very rapidly okay with the high speed especially the horse are running very high speed sir so how the horse running is possible means naturally horse have that capacity but if we provides that pollen diet okay again that time whatever that engines are there whatever that minerals are there within that pollen grains right these pollen grains are enter into the uh, horse body then these engines are enter into the horse cells then activates the horse cells then horse running very very okay running very with high speed right so what i am telling here presence of that pollen diet the athletes and race horses perform the best perform the best because of the pollen grains contains the rich nutrients and the enzymes pollen grains contains the rich nutrients and the enzymes see most of the students have to raise doubt here most of the students have to raise doubt here in the last class we discussed about uh, yeah this is the pollen grain structure right there is in large nucleus is there and there is in small nucleus is there right this is the one of the exine part this is one of the exine part right so this is the exine part yeah this is the exine part see what i am telling here i said already the exine is made up of with the sporopollen exine is made up of with the sporopollen exine is made up of with the sporopollen remember sporopollen is highly resistant highly resistant contains biological material highly resistant contains biological material all of you remember there is no enzyme to cleave the sporopollen okay even high temperature also the sporopollen is stable in alkaline conditions in basic conditions also the sporopollen is stable right so sporopollen is not cleaved sporopollen is not cleaved due to the sporopollen also within the fossils whatever the pollen grains are there the pollen grains are not destructed not destructed after several billion years also the pollen grains are very safe because of the sporopollen so here my question is okay just now i said the pollen grains are used as the diet okay these are having rich content of nutrients a uh, rich percentage of the enzymes rich percentage of nutrients are there sir you said other side sporopollen is not cleaved sporopollen is not cleaved other side you are saying pollen grains are used as energy source how this is possible means my direct question is how the pollen grains are digested inside the human body inside our digestive tract inside our digestive tract or how the pollen grains are digested by the horse digestive system because Okay, the race horse especially okay to the race horse especially provides that uh, pollen grains that right? pollen diet so here my question is very simple how the pollen grains how the pollen grains are digested inside the human digestive system inside the human digestive system all of you remember the answer is very very simple just guess the structure okay just see the structure and guess the answer see the answer is at some reasons the exine is absent this is exine part at some reasons the exine is absent okay exine is absent exine is absent exine is absent exine is absent means sporopollen is absent at some reasons sporopollen is absent at some reasons so if the sporopollen is absent at some reasons so whatever that our digestive tract enzymes are there which are act on in time which are act on in time here cleavage is takes place here cleavage is takes place here cleavage is takes place if these parts are removed if these parts if the ex, okay if these parts are removed
if these parts are released, right? Oh, sorry, removed from this polyndin structure, see the cytoplasm content is released into our digestive tract. So the cytoplasm content contains enzymes are utilized and whatever that minerals are minerals are there, minerals are absorbed, right? The storage food metal is utilized. So the concept is very very simple. Within the polyndin, at some reasons, okay, the exine is absent. Okay, we cannot leave the exine, but some reasons within the polyndin, the exine is absent. If the exine is absent, where the reasons the exine is absent, there our digestive tract enzymes are active, cleaves that uh, the particular part, removes the particular part, then from that uh, cleaved part or uh, from the open part, the cytoplasm is released into our digestive tract. So, okay, within our digestive tract, the cytoplasm contents are digested and absorbed. Right. So this is the very simple answer for the polyndin's digestion process. Right. So see, this is about that polyndin's lifespan and polyndin's are used as uh, energy source. Polyndin's are used as energy source. And coming to the next one, we'll discuss about uh, allergic reactions. See, most of the people are having asthma. Most of the people are having asthma. See, uh, yeah, we'll discuss within the next case uh, allergic reactions related with the pollen rings, allergic reactions and the pollen rings structure, right?